This is example 19 in the differentiation topic. We're going to have a look at some inverse trig functions and we're going to use uh, for this these standard derivatives which either you've had a look at proving or showing where they came from or you're just going to accept them as they are. Uh, as long as you can utilize these standard derivatives that's the main uh, focus in this course. So here are three standard derivatives. Two of them are very similar, obviously inverse sine, inverse cos x differ only by a negative sign. It's important to be able to remember that uh, and to keep the, the signs of these two derivatives uh, correct. Inverse tan uh, is different enough for it to be memorable. So before I actually jump into the example 19, I've got a little uh, half step example just to show you how this works. Now, the most important thing about these uh, derivatives is to remember if you're using the chain rule to d multiply by uh, the derivative to the, of the inside function, everybody tends to focus on the actual uh, fraction that has to get created and get so caught up in that they forget there's a second step. So if we're doing, for instance, the, the, the function f of x equals inverse cos of 2x, remember that 2x is a function on its own so we do have a function within a function here which means that we do have to use the chain rule process so our derivative f dash x first of all is going to be of the form of inverse cos which is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared now remember that when we're substituting in where x goes you can put a bracket and then decide, well, it's, it's 2x in this case goes in it. So it's 2x all squared. And that's the point where people then think, well, I've got to try and simplify that, sort that out, but then forget we're actually having to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which the derivative of 2x is 2. And then we can, in this case, simplify uh, this, the, the denominator becomes the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. And we've got 1 multiplied by 2 gives us 2. And that would be a, a satisfactory derivative for the inverse cos of 2x. So it's just important that you remember about the chain rule process. So the proper example 19 uh, has already a little bit of complexity in that we're dealing with a, a fraction in this inside function, it's, it's half x. So we'll find the derivative of the function y equals the inverse sine of x over 2. So y equals, just copy that out again, inverse sine of x over 2. So if we want to find the derivative, in this case dy by dx, we write down the form of the inverse sine, which is positive 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. There's my bracket. Whatever is in the inside function goes in there. So that's x over 2 multiplied by the derivative of the original inside function, which is going to be a half. Now, when the denominator has this fractional term in it, then we're obliged to simplify it so that there's not a fraction in it anymore. Um, what that means is that we're going to have to simplify that. Now you can either do that within the problem or you can take it out um, and do a little bit of simplifying itself. So for instance, if I were to write over here 1 minus x squared over 2, that's the same as the square root of 1 minus x squared over 4. In all of the, when as a fraction appears, you're going to have to create a common uh, one fraction. In other words, we're going to have to do that subtraction. So if you make the one four quarters to match the other denominator, then effectively we've got uh, a quarter times 4 minus x squared. And we can take the quarter out. And because the square root of a quarter is a half, we then end up with this expression here, a half times the square root of 4 minus x squared. Now that's a little bit of complicated 
for action work, especially with the square root sign and the quarter uh, being removed to become a half. Remember that we take the square root of the numerator and denominator separately. So put it, feeding it back in here, our denominator has now become a half times the square root of 4 minus x squared, still multiplied by a half. Well, that's the same as basically saying multiplying the denominator by 2. Okay, that 2 is going to come as the number 2 in the denominator, not a half. So I can write that as 1 over 2 times a half times 4 minus x squared. And those 2s are going to cancel out and I get that. So my derivative dy by dx is 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared. So it's not, the issue is not uh, substituting the values into our standard derivative. The main issue with these problems is doing the simplification in terms of both the fraction work and um, and some of the algebra. So it's a good thing to practice that. So next example will be 20 and 21, so check those out too.